Carrie Lynn, Traveling Artista. This is on sketching therapy. I'll tell you how I got here, but here I am, got my Tootsie Pop, just needed that today. I also am looking at charcoal and kneaded erasers and getting ready to draw. It was just one of those no good, terrible, very bad days, and this morning was not, I must have washed out four or five different pastel paintings. They just were not coming. So it got to be about 58 degrees outside, decided, yes, I'll take a walk. So I went for a walk over a mile, didn't measure it, and came back feeling much better. I dragged my easel out onto the deck. I brought out my equipment, my drawing tools, <clears throat> my tripod that holds my camera so that I could take a video. Got my Tootsie Pop because, I don't know, sometimes you just need something like to, to chew on and just kind of kept me going. Anyway, pulled out a picture that I had been looking at for quite a while and decided I'm just going to do a charcoal. So I have my vine charcoal stick here. It's laying on its long side, even though it's a round stick. And I just start measuring and putting in the basic angles of different areas of the figure. Faces are always more delicate and kind of double checking that but not finishing it. Got the Tootsie Pot back again. Yeah, I don't know. Helps somehow. Anyway. I am moving along here. Oh, the paper. I wanted to tell you about the paper. This is like a BFK print paper that I have. I have a roll of it, and I'll cut it up into um, these pieces. The line on the inside will become a 12 by 18 drawing, and I have taped it down and prepared it with some pumice gel. That's golden pumice gel that I use to sand papers for doing pastels. And this one kind of just has a haphazard application so there's texture in there and you'll see as I start lying in the background on this painting how that texture does some really fun things with the background. It's nice to do that to yourself. It's a psychological thing sometimes, just to, one would say, mess yourself up, but also just to kind of allow that creative spirit to come through. And these happy accidents happen that can really add to the drawing or the painting. This girl is looking up, it's one of my photos into the sun. She's actually looking at milkweed seeds floating around. But in this sketch, I'm not going to add those in. If I do a finished drawing or a painting of it, I probably would put those in. What I'm looking for is that open expression, that joy, but just a hint of it because this is not a highly detailed drawing. working in what a lot of people call the negative space around the figure helps to make her glow. Makes that edge of her hair seem like it's really sun washed. I keep trying to check my proportions, my relationships, where the inside of the elbow comes in relationship to the one on the other side of the body, you always want to be checking back and forth. Now a lot of this, because I've been painting for 40 years or so, becomes something that's almost subconscious to me, almost unconscious, because I've done it too much. Sorry about chewing the Tootsie Pop there, but really, I should have been out of the frame. Anyway. <clears throat> You get focused on painting and you don't always notice every little thing. I just appreciated being outside 
in the sun, painting. It's much nicer than being in a, a studio, especially on days when you need it, when you need that fresh air and you need that sunshine. These details get to be a little tricky. <clears throat> you want to watch and double check and correct and work it again and make sure they're as close to right as you can make them. You saw me kind of do a quick blow off there. This again is just vine charcoal. But as I was putting in the background, it was capturing, the texture of that pumice gel was capturing a lot of the charcoal. And some of it would fall down. It would come down over the figure. So I'm just blowing it away because if I try to brush it away, it'll blend it in. It'll make a soft tone on the paper. Details of the hand, pretty tricky, but you want to get them right. Hands and faces are, you got to kind of know what you're doing and you got to think about it. I try to think three dimensionally. It's not just lines and shading. You have to think of the three dimensional form and that's what's going to help the hand or other aspects of your painting really work. It's like looking up under her chin. That's a bit of a trick. You have to understand the structure of the face and have drawn it from many different angles. Straight on, profile, three quarters, looking up, looking down, all of these aspects. Understand the bones, the skull, the structure underneath, the muscles that go over it. I remember taking hours in my academic courses and drawing bones, skulls, muscles, studying them, using books to study by. We did have an actual skeleton replica in the classroom, the studio, it wasn't a classroom, and we would draw from that. It helps you to understand structure of the body so much better. Take the time to look at it, to understand. Don't just try to surface paint it. I've seen some people who can do very nice little portraits and they come across pretty well, but every now and then you can tell if they haven't got that background knowledge of the physiology of the face, it will show up somewhere. Plus if you do it, you're learning something new. and. It's fascinating. You just want to learn things. All things in the universe tie into all other things in the universe. A painting comes from understanding the form, especially if you're doing a figure. Now I am using my kneaded eraser, not to erase, but to draw in highlights. It's just lifting up areas that you want to glow. The nice thing about a kneaded eraser is that you can make it down to a little point, you can make it flat, you look at the end of it before you use it, check what part of it you are going to use on the drawing, and the shape of that, because that is your drawing tool, it's going to affect the painting. Now you saw me pick up some of that charcoal off, off to the side with my finger to add in a very soft, light tone on the face. Something in a, like the two or three range, maybe up to four. 
You can just put some extra charcoal off to the side, pick a little bit of that up with your finger, and smudge it lightly into the drawing for a very light shaded area. Picking out the highlight on that arm, the light is basically behind her, kind of above and behind her. I kind of like this too because it's bigger than what I've been working on. I'm wondering if I got a little frustrated with some of the paintings that I eventually washed out this morning because they weren't very big. I like to work big. It's hard to work, well, it's not hard to work big with pastels, but it's tricky because then you have to frame it. And when you want to use good gallery glass on your finished pastel paintings, it's going to cost you a lot. So I know a lot of pastelists work smaller. I got to get back to big. I like big. Something where I can get the whole range of motion of my arm. This is closer. Oh, I also did a drawing this afternoon on a piece of some sort of white drawing paper. It is so smooth. I didn't like what it did. I'm getting so I like that textured surface. Just a very skim of pumice or sand on the paper. It adds a lot of interest. Now get looking at that arm that's on the right. The proportions are off. Later on, I do fix that. I'm not sure if it shows up on this, but uh, by the final photo, I think I've adjusted it pretty well. The looseness of this drawing just helped me so much. I was so tight this morning on those other paintings I did that this was much more enjoyable, and I felt a lot better after I had finished it. It's not a masterpiece, not a great work of art, but it was therapy for me. Here I'm going to spray it lightly just because fine charcoal is so soft. Now you start off to the side and you sweep back and forth with the spray over the surface. Don't stop right on the drawing or the painting. Start at the side, sweep around, keep the drawing vertical. Then if any big drops come out, they fall to the ground. And you saw me turn the can upside down there and spray that. That's so it doesn't clog the sprayer. If you lie the painting down flat on the ground and you spray it, you're going to get those big globs of fixative on it. So don't do that. Keep it light, misty on the painting. Here's the finished piece. It was just kind of fun. Did a little adjustment to that arm. And I'm not displeased. So I hoped you enjoyed this little trip with me. I feel better and I just wanted to share it because everybody has some of those days that aren't so great and just keep pushing through.